Okay, dear friends, uh, now it's only this panel, and uh, after that uh, we have a possibility then to, to mingle over a glass of wine. But uh, before that, uh, I hope that we'll have an interesting discussion. Uh, and uh, I would start with uh, uh, Larissa, like uh, Annika said in the introduction. And I have to say, I mean, it's incredible. Here we have Larissa, uh, uh, who is responsible for the company Forteco, uh, in Narva, uh, close to the Russian border, and Larissa is a woman and Russian-speaking woman. So, how is how is it possible? And also, uh, it would be interesting to hear about uh, uh, what you thought or are thinking about uh, what has been discussed uh, so far today. Um, thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Larisa Shabunova, and I am the managing director of Fortaka Estonia. As it was said, the company is uh, based in Narva, and, um, but basically it's not about uh, working in a Russian environment where 95% Russian-speaking population lives, and basically in our company we also have majority of Russian-speaking people, but it's about being the uh, manager, uh, women manager or top management position in the company, uh, where we have 95% of men. And uh, the company which is operating in the heavy industry, so we are producing uh, different metal structures for high-tech, uh, material handling, uh, offshore and uh, mining uh, industry, uh, where we have a lot of engineers, technologists, or people really engineers from background. And our company was managed by men during 65 years. And then I was promoted as a woman on uh, the position. And um, basically, that was, uh, first of all, it was a really brave decision, which was uh, done by my superior. And my superior is Swedish. Uh, uh, and uh, today we saw different uh, presentations um, how Sweden society promotes uh, the woman on the top management position. So basically that was a brave decision because uh, at that time um, I think um, it was more shocky decision rather than positive decision or how to say inspiring decision because uh, basically nobody was ready that the woman will manage uh, the company uh, in such kind of heavy industry uh, business. And uh, for myself, uh, I think it took more than half a year just to prove that I can manage and I can do the work not uh, worse, at least not worse than unbanned, but uh, it has appeared that during these years, I'm already four years on this position, the company has been developed in a really successful company in Narva. We are the second biggest employer. We recruited uh, 200 new jobs. We have doubled up our net sales. We have attracted a lot of new business, new projects, new customers. And also we have tremendously increased the employer uh, brand and employer image. So we can recruit, in spite now it's quite difficult to recruit talents, but we can recruit because the image of the company is quite positive. Also, I'm proud to say that in our management team we have, uh, um, except me also, two women. So we are nine persons, but three are women, myself. One is uh, HR manager and another one is production director. So basically being a woman on the position of production director is also really weird, <laughs> weird situation. And uh, I would say it was also quite a difficult decision, not only for me, but for her to take this, uh, to take, to take this opportunity or to take this challenge. And now uh, since one year, I have to say to her all the time that she is doing the great job, but she is always saying to me that no, I'm not doing the great job. I am I'm, uh, underperform. Uh, so basically, uh, what I what I say that it's really important uh, to support the women on the man management position by maybe by mentoring, by coaching, and by positive uh, uh, inspirational examples. But basically, this is my story. <laughs> Thank you, Larissa. Yes. Larissa. Yeah. Uh, it's a wonderful story, and we have heard about uh, many wonderful stories and, and studies uh, uh, that is supporting what you are saying. Uh, Martin, uh, you represent uh, uh, the owners of, of uh, 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 many 
uh, companies that you have invested in uh, all, over, all over the Baltics. Uh, uh, what is your impression when you have heard the discussion today? And, and do you, I mean, because for being a, a, a representative for the owner, you really have the possibility to, to, to have an impact on, on these issues. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you, uh, Christer. So, hello, everybody. I'm, um, yeah, I'm representing Paltcap. Um, we are um, the biggest private equity and venture capital investor in the uh, Baltic countries. We uh, have our uh, offices and teams uh, across the three countries. So we, we invest in all, uh, all three, uh, three countries and we, we try to look at companies where, where we as owners can uh, add value, can, can grow them, and uh, we, we aim to grow them into like, business champions and uh, to make them more transparent, uh, etc. But I have okay, a Okay, now I have to interrupt you. That was good, <laughs> because you saw that with diversity, you get more profit, uh, you get uh, more innovation. So, and exactly. I'm sure that you are putting, I actually a, wanted to, putting a lot of focus on that. <laughs> I wanted to make a confession that uh, in, in private equity industry, I just uh, checked uh, this morning that uh, I think it's probably at the very bottom of uh, women uh, being represented in, uh, in, the, in that field at all for, for some reason. It's, it's less than 10% in, uh, in senior positions. And actually, it is a big issue uh, throughout uh, in globally, I think, that... Uh, that there are so few women, in, uh, especially in the private equity firms themselves, that are governing these uh, companies. That uh, I think the, the goal is to double it at least, to, to raise it to, to 20 percent. And, uh, and the reasons for that uh, are, are, are probably the it might be the image of the business that it's it's too too masculine or or or, or too much thought that it's 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 there is not enough work-life balance. And uh, the women in, in universities somehow decide not to join that industry. It's, uh, uh, it's also, there are, it a lot depends on the, on the networks, uh, that a lot of these sort of uh, old uh, industry players, they, they, who have established the, the companies, uh, the, the, the investment firms, they, uh, they have the networks and then somehow it, 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 it relies on, uh, on that. Um, and it's it's uh, so so that's one of the one of the things. But uh, but clearly, you know, when when investing in in the companies, we have actually in our portfolio, we have many companies where we uh, where uh, where there are uh, women managers, even CEOs, and uh, and I think the in the management boards, the majority of the companies, we have at least some uh, uh, some women. Uh, so so it's clearly you know something. You know, I, I think it's it's a it's a good initiative to have, but there are many practical points to it as well that it might not you know happen that easily, especially you know in our environment where this is not sort of considered that normal as as in in, uh, in some some other countries maybe. Yeah, yeah, I see, but but I mean, <clears throat> it sounds so odd to me. It uh, doesn't make sense. I mean, we have businesses, and what are they supposed to do? They are supposed to make profit. Do you agree with that? Yes. And we have studies, all the studies, they show us uh, that uh, diversity actually add to uh, profit and innovation and everything. And still, uh, we are where we are. So now we have to change uh, things, really, in order to achieve this money that is uh, floating around, and it must be uh, in the interest, for example, uh, for you as an owner. So couldn't you then like uh, boost and encourage uh, women to, to, to uh, apply for jobs and then have uh, we heard about sponsorships, uh, uh, mentorships in order uh, to, to uh, make it possible mm -hmm. and in order to, to, to get the diversity in the future? Actually, I've, personally, I've never thought of this uh, being an issue because somehow you know, the environment where I'm working, at least, you know, with the people with, I'm, with whom I'm, you know, dealing with every day, we, we don't have any preference that we want to hire more male or, or, or more female, that we, we usually hire people based on uh, merits, that, you know, whoever 
is a, is a good candidate that we try to pick the best uh, best candidates that whoever, whoever they are and um, so 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 that's that's the way how <laughs> Christian your comment Yes, uh, of course, it, it's absolutely right that you have, should, should have the best candidates with the merits are the best. I think one of the reasons uh, that this Thomas uh, produced the other Thomas is that you, you, you're looking at merits in a maybe in an unconscious biased way. Uh, so uh, the, I don't think that all the companies are, are deciding that we don't want any women. But uh, you think as a manager, if you're a male manager, that the, the merits that you have yourself is basically the merits that you want. Uh, and I think that what you see as the, the courageous companies that they are taking in other kind of persons that having merits but not exactly the same as the other ones or not yet somehow different but sometimes really different. And one merit I experienced from Sweden is that uh, to be in a parental leave is for many Swedish companies an important merit actually to, to, uh, to have a, a good manager. Yeah. I can tell from uh, my own uh, 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 history that, uh, that I have a major in, in science of literature and uh, still I was, uh, uh, I was recruited to the management team at Finnav and I think uh, what you said, uh, it was actually quite brave of them to, to, to recruit a person uh, with, a, with a major in, in science of literature for that uh, uh, position. <laughs> but, but, so I guess I was one, one of the few in, in, in Finland at that time with, with that back, background. But um, uh, Larissa, uh, how, uh, I mean, uh, when you became uh, uh, a manager for, for uh, Fortaco, and then you have 95% of your workforce are, are men, how did they uh, uh, welcome you? They were shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and of course, it took, uh, as I already said, it took quite a time just to prove that I can manage. But still, since I was uh, already working in this company for quite a number of years, so they knew me from really positive perspective. And um, um, uh, it, it, I managed uh, to create a good team and also a good environment and also to, how to say, the right atmosphere to uh, and establish the right uh, development program for the company. But still, we had some period when the company had to adapt to this decision. Uh, moreover, my, maybe I will say that it's not only about the company where we work, but also about overall the business, because, for example, the customers, the suppliers, all the stakeholders, if you're talking about Ida Viruma, uh, metal working cluster, so all companies are managed by men. And basically, I even had such situations that um, sometimes people didn't take the, me seriously. Mm. And the society was just not ab able to accept this decision. Whatever you do, it, it, they just don't accept. You only can be accepted when you deliver the results. And only after that they will take it. Seriously. So, but after that, it goes really smoothly. But you have to be consistent. You have to be strong, and you have to believe that you will do that. Yeah. Yeah. Now I have to to, to defend Martin a little bit because uh, uh, the company he is uh, representing, Baltic Cup, is a very good company, uh, very high when it comes to sustainability and and the ethical standards and so forth. But. But uh, couldn't you, or, or shouldn't you now after this conference, uh, uh, figure out uh, ways to, to have more diversity in the companies you own, and of course in your uh, own, own company as well? I, I fully agree. That, uh, it's, uh, but I think it, it somehow has to, has to we, we need to figure out the way how to have more candidates uh, among the female uh, gender. Uh, because that's where it, where it starts. We need to have a selection of of, uh, of candidates whenever you know you, you 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 try to recruit people either to to the investment firm or or, or to the management positions and uh, in the companies and and that maybe even starts from the school level that you know you need to like we looked at this unconscious bias uh, uh, before that uh, you know we need to stop uh, telling people that. 
you know, may, some some are better in math and then some are better in, in something else that, and uh, and we have to somehow you know convince everybody that you know they they should all, no matter where they come from or what's mm. their background or gender, that they should all have the courage to uh, to apply for positions and have sort of ambition to do something more and yeah. also be ready to fail because that could be exactly. one of the uh, reasons why there are you know not so many female candidates that uh, the you are you're more afraid of failure mm -hmm. and uh, and obviously you will you will have some failures if you try to aim for the top uh uh, Risto, uh, earlier today, he, he referred to, to one mentorship uh, uh, program that was very successful, also globally successful uh, in Finland. And, and I was actually a, a part of that. I was a mentor also for two years, I, th I think. And uh, we have actually, uh, uh, our organization, we, ha we have uh, uh, suggested in, in Estonia that why don't we put up a, a mentorship uh, program for, for young uh, female leaders in Estonia, and then we could add this uh, uh, Nordic dimension to it. Uh, do you think, uh, Larissa, could that be uh, something? Yes, uh, of uh, course. Of course, it would be really helpful. Yeah, definitely. Martin, do you? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. So, and you, do you like it? Hands up. <laughs> Super. <laughs> Then I can go back to Kaupanduskoja and say, tell them that here are a lot of people that would like to have such a, such a program. Because I think uh, that would be one way to actively uh, help a uh, uh, young female leader to, to advance in their careers. But maybe also, uh, if I may jump in, that uh, the, the parental leave is probably one of the things that, in, at least in our country, it's you know, quite common that you take uh, maternity leave for at least a year or, or, or even longer. And for small companies, you know, we have mostly small companies in Estonia. That's, that's a huge problem if, uh, you know, for a company, if uh, sort of, yeah, a of course. top management uh, uh, person goes for, for a leave, that you don't have any replacement. It's yeah. very difficult to find one. And uh, we, I, I think it hasn't been really in the culture to have uh, paternity leaves, uh, and, and and that could, you know, if if that's promoted by the by the government or state, that mm. could change things. Yeah, like uh, a little bit like the Icelandic uh, uh, model, uh, Christian. Well, then I can come back a bit about to my experience from Sweden. Uh, in S the Swedish system is, in a way, constructed that you have no, normally you have a half year is the one, the female in parental leave, and then half year is the man in parental leave. And many of the companies are then using this time of, of, of um, getting people in from outside to, to test them out, and then see if they can stay for this half year, or other, you get people the possibility to, to be a leader for a while and see if it, it works when you have this uh, six months uh, away. And it's not, if you, a year is, of course, another thing, but it, it, trying to get six months for, for each is it's quite important. And um, I know, for example, one of the big Swedish companies that most people know uh, also here, uh, IKEA, they are more or less forcing uh, the um, male, uh, the male employees that are becoming fathers. Um, and if they want to have a, a future in the company as a manager, it's good if they go on parental leave because it, it represents the culture of the company. And I think that's a way you can do it. Then to say that it's obvious for both men and women to do that, then you don't really have this big problem that, that yes, the women are yeah, having a problem being, being away and not coming back or being back away. We could perhaps talk a little, more, a little bit more about uh, uh, legislation. Uh, uh, we touched upon it earlier. But at this point, I would also, since we have very knowledgeable people here in the panel, uh, uh, are there any questions to the panelists? There is one. Can you stand up, please? Yes. Um, I have a question for uh, Mrs. Japon and also for Mr. Kudar. Um, don't tell me you did all that you done with eight hours, five days work. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I'm just wondering how much did you invest yourself to get into the position? And uh, do you expect uh, the same from uh, your future employees? 
let's say that invested quite a lot. First of all, uh, it's uh, I have three educations, um, and um, between these educations, I uh, always uh, studied different things, and it's constant reading and so on. Uh, but also, it's a great passion to work. It's to more detail understand the situation, business, and uh, constant learning from your stakeholders. Uh, but um, if I'm talking about my colleagues, then of course my expectations are high. But at the same time, I um, do my best to support. And basically, um, we do a lot of actions to promote internal, internally our talents. So we believe that internally we can create much more talent uh, pool rather than we recruit from outside. Uh, so, from my perspective, yes, really high standards, but at the same time, really high support. Marty. Yeah, so I can, I can only agree with what Larissa was saying, that you have to be ready to invest your, 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 your time and, and, uh, and really be committed to what, what you are doing and, and not, uh, uh, not give up if there are some uh, failures initially that you you have to have the persistence to to really you know stick to what you think is is right and uh, and uh, and look at it on a on, for 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 a long term especially in our business it's uh, i've been working in in, in bulk cap for close to 20 years already and and it is a very long term uh, of position that if you if you join this private equity firm you, you usually work for the first ten years to really learn what it what it is all about. Time is flying like we used to say in at Finnair, but uh, <laughs> are there more questions? <laughs> one uh, last one perhaps. Questions? Questions? Money? <laughs> Money. <laughs> Everybody's watching at the watch. <laughs> no questions. No questions. Anyway, I think uh, since we are running out of time, I would like to thank uh, uh, Larissa, uh, Martin, and, and Christian for, for being here with us. And then I give the floor to Annika. Please. <laughs>